Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. welcome back, and as you saw by the thumbnail, I want to talk a little bit about the Trophy Hunter, the Scion Sniper Rifle, and it's pretty cool that all the Sundial bosses were the Scions, and one of the main Season Pass weapons is the sniper they use. Trophy Hunter is more of a PvE sniper, but I do have a PvP section for it, and gameplay-wise, there's going to be some PvE, PvP, there's going to be some Gambit. But the real reason is to get it for PvE usage. It has an excellent perk pool for PvE, very special perk combinations for there. And the term God Roll is thrown around very loosely, and I guess you could say the Sniper has multiple rolls of those. It's obtained from the Season Pass at level 45 after you get it. It can drop from various activities. The ornament is at rank 95. At the Tower Obelisk, you see the Season Pass weapons. You get to a point, you can grab four bounties for the Sniper Rifle, deplete the bounties, and then start searching for your rolls. It's very nice that it has a very small perk pool with good perks. So there's actually three or four different ways you can go about it. I'm I'm gonna go through those perks, those rolls, we can talk about what you can do with them. It's a void aggressive frame sniper rifle, lies in your energy slot, and base stat wise, those are on the screen right now, it's as expected for these high damage sniper rifles. It's tied for the best range out of all the high impacts, and the more range, the better aim assist. Now the rest are gonna be low. The 46 aim assist is actually pretty nice for one of these. It's a locked in scope with a 50 stat, and the higher the stat, the more magnification that it has. One of the higher zooms is gonna be like a 53 stat, like the Valletta D or the Show of Force. So at 50, this is a pretty rangy stat. Scope. It's got the same zoom factor as Tatara Gaze from the Black Armory. Most PvP players gravitate towards the lower zoom like the Soul Survivor's 40, or the even lower zooms like Revoker or the Twilight Oath's 35. PvE wise, that's not that important though. And since it's a PvE sniper, the barrels and magazines are pretty big for it. It's a high impact, your perks are going to be more damage dealing for it, and when you look at the barrel, the best bang for your buck is going to be actually handling additions. Handling is going to be your aim down sight speed, your swap speed, and the top three handling perks in this order are Fluted Barrel gives plus 15 to handling, Arrowhead gives plus 10 to handling, and then Corkscrew plus 5. If you can, if there's an option, try not to reduce the handling stat anymore. Something like Extended Barrel gives negative 10 to handling, so that brings the stat all the way down to 21, and it's aimed down sights and it's just, it's just very clunky, it's already slow. So it's not going to be a very good experience for you if you start bringing that lower and lower. So mostly just try to stay away from barrels that have big negatives on the sniper rifle. And PvP wise, that changes a little bit because if you get Snapshot, and that's going to be talked about later, handling perks are still going to be good for the swap. If not those, you want straight range and stability perks like small bore hammer forge that's gonna be better suited try not to mess with negatives on this thing for the magazine the sniper holds three rounds there are three magazine options they give you more ammo and all of them goes from three to four there are two that you want and one that you don't because these are going to be paired with backup mag we have extended mag appended mag and tactical mag each one again grants plus one so to give you four total however backup mag works on a percentage and how it works out only the appended and extended go from four to five tac mag is going to stay at four even if you have on backup mag that's going to be what you want that we can get to five, but if not, something like Alloy Mag is decent, faster reload when the magazine is empty, or even Flared Mag well, but I would go for the magazine perks, specifically Extended and Appended. The final two nodes, each node only has four perks in them, so in the first node we have Lead from Gold. Picking up heavy ammo also grants this weapon ammo, so say it's Void Burn, say it's Heavy Weight, you're always going to have ammo for it, it's a great option. Even if it's not Void Burn, even if it's just Heavy Weight, it really works out. Triple tap, rapidly landing precision hits, returns one round of the magazine. This is why we want the mag perk with backup mag, that's why it's important. That way we can get off seven total round, top tier perk for it. Pulse Monitor partially reloads a portion of the magazine when the wielder is wounded. Now, I am a fan of this perk. This is my main perk on my Dust Rock Blues. And in this first node, this is pretty much like the only PvP option. Nothing else really works anyway. Not Lead from Gold, not Genesis. You could go for Triple Tap, but you're going to get more out of Pulse Monitor. Now, there are two things that are really nice about Pulse Monitor. And number one is going to be when you're low health, it loads in two rounds from the reserve. So, one, even when it's stowed, you take shots. Maybe you're in a primary duel, or maybe you take shots when moving. Maybe you're going to the other side of the map and someone tags you in the body, you get down to critical health. Pulse monitor works in the background even if it's stowed and it's going to load in two rounds. This is good because you can pick up special ammo just running through chaos, grabbing bricks, and if you take shots, gets you down to critical health, it's going to reload those. And the second thing is, say you're sniping and you only have one shot in the magazine, or you, say you have two and you missed one, you only have one left, you start taking fire, you miss that final shot. Even if it has zero in the magazine, if they get you down into red health, that critical health, it auto reloads two back in. It could save you. And it's also worth noting, this is the only randomly rolled sniper in the game that has this perk. And the final perk is Genesis. Not a fancy perk, but on this sniper, it has some use. Breaking a combatant's shields fills its magazine from reserves. Energy weapons regenerate ammo on hit when matching the damage type of the combatant shield. So you start landing some void, starts regenerating. Any other shield, once you break it, it refills the mag from reserves. Pretty good. 
The second perk node, we have Vorpal Weapon, bonus damage against bosses, vehicles, and guardians in their super. So we have Vorpal on a high impact sniper. Now in PvE, Vorpal adds 15% more damage to bosses, majors, or vehicles. And I've talked about this a couple times, and yes, it does work versus majors. So at first, we do have this ogre, this boss. Vorpal does 18,333. And when you put on a boss spec, it goes to 19,758. Now, when you do add on a boss spec versus a boss, you deal 24 total percent more damage than base. Moving on to this major, at base it is 17,591. With Vorpal, it goes up to 20,230. When you add on the major spec, that goes to 21,802. That 24% more damage. It's a very good perk. Now in the Crucible, Vorpal works differently on the weapon that it's on. As an example, Breach Light, while someone's in their super, it deals 55% more damage than base versus that super. So without Vorpal weapon, it does 22 to the head. With Vorpal, it does 34 to the head. So 55% more. Now on a high impact sniper, like Trophy Hunter, the body shot damage versus a super goes from 75 to 89. So 18.6% more damage. On a headshot, goes from 233 to 268. 15% more damage. So Vorpal on Trophy Hunter really isn't that special for PvP. It is worth noting versus a Gunslinger, they don't really have damage resistance, so it does 175 damage to the body. It doesn't even one-shot body them. And Snapshot's also in this node, so you're going to be taking away Snapshot for Vorpal. It's not really helping you out that much. Next we have Dragonfly, Precision Kills Grant and Elemental Explosion. You can add on the Dragonfly spec. Now, on a high impact aggressive sniper, I personally wouldn't be wanting Dragonfly here. Maybe. I mean, maybe on a fast firing sniper with seven rounds or so, but even then, I would more so want it for a hand cannon, a pulse rifle with Dragonfly. There are better PvE perks for it. The third perk is Disruption Break, a great perk, and you think about how long this game has been out, this is the first time it's been placed on a sniper rifle, and a high impact sniper at that. Breaking an enemy shield with this weapon makes them more vulnerable to kinetic damage for a short time. Break the shields, debuff them, you do 50% more kinetic damage. I do value this perk, some don't, and I do have a perk combination for it. And lastly, Snapshot, that's the PvP perk, faster aim down side speed, which is needed if you want to be aggressive with your sniper. So onto the perk combinations and the overview for PvP, we'll start off with PvP. First of all, if you snipe or want to learn to snipe, I suggest to try them all, because each one does feel different. A sniper is going to be to the player. One may love one and others don't like that one. And like for me, I don't like Twilight Oath, I never have. I use Omnis and I, Beloved, and in the Kinetic, I use Revoker. For Trophy Hunter, you would need a snapshot roll because it's very slow and clunky. Even if you have Dragon Shadow, Maybe you can get by, but Snapshot's gonna be the best. And if you do get one and you like to snipe, I would try it in the Crucible, cause who knows, you might fall in love with it. It does have a lower aim assist stat, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. For a controller, when you drag and flick, you have a little bit more control because it's not as sticky as something is, let's say, beloved. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. And that's really the long and short. The role would be pulse monitor with Snapshot. And honestly, you're kind of forced into this cause you need to be snappy. And in the first node, no other perks are gonna work for you. So that's what you're gonna be ending up with. You could do disruption break because that does work in PvP as well, but you would need something like a Dragon Shadow. Enhanced Sniper Dexterity doesn't quite get you there because it's so sluggish. And overall for the Crucible to me, it felt okay, nothing special. If you like to snipe, if you're a good sniper, you're going to do well with it. Now on to PvE. As with the title, this is one of the best solo snipers in the game to use. Could mean in strikes, on hunts, the sundial, menagerie, anything. It also does really well when you're working together with a group. So the first roll is triple tap with Vorpal Weapon. You would need a backup mag with a pended or extended mag, that way you can get to 5, therefore you can triple tap your way to 7. In all these situations, firing line on a soul survivor is the better option, right? when you're talking about Menagerie, when you're talking about Sundial, 25% more damage when a couple teammates are near. So you're going to be working together, but a lot of times you take that sniper into a strike or even the Sundial and players just aren't really on the same page. Or maybe you're soloing PvE content right when it comes out, the story mission stuff. Firing line isn't going to help you there. And at the start of seasons, the content's usually higher level than you. So that's where this role comes in. That's where it can work. It's one of the best solo snipers in the game. Really, it is. If I was with a team, I would be using my firing line sniper because we would be working together, but but I do play solo a lot, so it's really good that I have this role. The next PvE role is going to be Genesis with Disruption Break, so I ended up really liking this one, and the, the whole process with it is that you shoot the shields, you break them, it refills the sniper magazine, then onto the kinetic, dealing 50% more damage, and a high impact sniper with Disruption Break is just kind of nutty. Good for the solo player, because you can pop shields from the back, you can still be helping your team. Not everyone beelines with 1-2 Punch and Trench Barrel, 
and Greaves and Liar's Handshake, things like that. You can just pop shields fairly easily because it's a high impact sniper. And having Genesis is great because you know that you're the one that popped it. And you for sure know that the debuff is going on. Because sometimes a lot of people are shooting at shields. You don't know who popped it. You don't know if you were the one. The only way you would know is when you switch to your primary to see if you have that extra damage. With Genesis, it's nice because you do know that they're debuffed because it refilled your magazine. So while you're doing that, meanwhile, random players with Trench Barrel and the 1-2 Punch, the Paragon Greaves, the things that we talked about, are all getting that 50% more damage. It's all shared. So it's nice. But I'll tell you, it's nearly a perfect sniper for Gambit, specifically pairing it with Malfeasance. That way, if I invade, I have a sniper to use and the malfeasance if they invade i get more damage against them because i have malfeasance and i have a sniper to use for a long distance but taken are out in there you pop the envoys quickly with a sniper rifle you debuff them and then you start hitting them with malfeasance and that already does increase damage to take and it's really good it's a nice combo not to mention the captains blockers that come over they have shields you can do that to them as well and you can do it from a distance it's a really nice roll for it and lastly for pve you can't go wrong with lead from gold with either vorpal or disruption break in conclusion, it has a very small perk pool, and if you start ripping these out, getting these to drop, the rolls that we talked about today are going to find their way to you. There's some really special rolls for it, and I really don't have a bad thing to say about Trophy Hunter. There hasn't really been that much urgency on a PvE sniper since Firing Line came out. We all know Izanagi's a beast there. We all know that Firing Line's really good. But with this one having Vorpal, and even with Disruption Break, it has a place. It really does. It's, it's more solid if you're doing activities solo, because it's going to be more dependable compared to a Firing Line sniper. But even if you go into group activities with your friends, friends and a fire team, it can shine there as well. You should have a lot of opportunity to grab the exact roles if you're participating with the foundation. If you have a whole bunch of Fractaline, then why not? Grab these roles and try them. They're really good tools. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. What do you think about Trophy Hunter? If you're using it, are you using it solo? Or are you using it with a team? And how's it working out for you? Let's talk about it down below. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.